Okay, algebra, here they come. All the answers to the test we took yesterday. Hidden in this video somewhere is the keyword you need to take the test, the retest tomorrow. This right here, the x squared term, is the key to seeing that this is not a linear function. This here is a linear function with a slope of 1 fourth. This one, a linear function with a slope of 3 fourths. And this here is a linear function written almost in standard form. If you add 5x to both sides, it becomes very clear <coughs> that this is a linear function with, an episode, with a, <coughs> a slope of 5. All right, for this problem here, you've got a couple of things you can do. The first and most cumbersome is to convert this equation right here into is to convert this equation right here into slope intercept form. So subtract 6x from both sides and you'll end up with 3y equals negative 6x plus 6. Divide both sides by 3 and you'll end up with y equals negative 2x plus 2. So you've got so you've got a slope of negative two and a y-intercept of positive two. And now convert the other almost in standard form equation into an equation in slope-intercept form. <coughs> Subtract, no, add four x to both sides and you end up with three y equals four x plus two, divide both sides by 3 and end up with y equals 4 thirds x plus 2 thirds. And now you can compare the slopes and the y-intercepts. Clearly the slope has not been, clearly the slope has been changed so a and b are out. Now we've got to choose between b and D and the difference there is between the y-intercept. So if here our y-intercept is two and here the y-intercept is two thirds, let's try out both. Either two has been multiplied by one third or four has been taken away from two. Well, if you do the math, this one matches, so the answer has got to be B. The other way to go about this is to compare the slope and the y-intercept with your standard form identities. So your 6 over 3, but the opposite of that, so your slope for the first one is negative 2, it's the opposite of A over B, and for the second equation here, the standard form identity tells us, careful now, it's been written in reverse order. A is negative four, so we need the opposite of negative four over three, which simplifies to positive four thirds. And then the standard form identity for the y-intercept is C over B, so that's six over positive three, which is a y-intercept of two, and here, it is C over B is two over three. And then you do the same comparison that you did last time. Either way, whether you're using the standard form identity or converting to slope intercept form, you gotta end up comparing the slope and the y intercept to see what changes have been made. All right, for this one here, just be sure you're reading carefully. Graph the line is shown below. Predict how the equation would be changed if the line is shifted down five units. So go to the y-intercept and count down one, two, three, four, five units. And then it says the slope is doubled. So determine the slope of the given line. We've gone up one and over three. So that's a slope of one third. You could double that just by multiplying by three. Or you could go up two over three and graph a new line in either case. Uh, because the 
Y intercept has been shifted down five, A and B are out, and because the slope has been doubled, C is the only possible answer. This problem is not particularly fun, but here goes. We could set up the direct variation y equals k times 4, which makes the constant of variation 3 fourths, and then go plug it in again if y equals kx. Now that's y equals 3 fourths x. And now let's just match our x and y's. 3 fourths, let's see. So 3 is with the model, and 4 is with the plane, which makes y, m, and x, p. So that's m equals 3 fourths, p. The other way to go about that one is to write the ratio 3 fourths is equal to m over p, because you gotta note that three goes with the model and that four goes with the plane. And then if you multiply both sides by p, these will cancel and you'll be left with three fourths p is equal to m. All right, for this problem right here, let's see. We want the equation in slope intercept form, but that's all four options. Here we go, for the slope of a line with negative one half, so check all your slopes. All right, doesn't look like we can rule anything out. Pass to the point two, negative four. I'll tell you what, if we try to match equations to graphs, negative one half, this graph has a positive slope, so that one's out. Now the other three do have negative slopes, but if you look at C, this is a slope of what looks like negative two not negative one half. So there's the point three right there, and if we went up two and back one, we'd be right there on the line. So C's out, because that's too slow, uh, too steep for a slope of negative one half. Uh, so that just leaves B and D, and if we plot the point two, negative four, clearly that doesn't show up on B, but two, negative four does show up on D. So that's your answer. Alrighty, this one here is a rather straightforward point slope form. The only wrinkle is in the negatives. So we've got X1 and Y1, X2 and Y2, so use the slope formula, Y2 minus Y1 divided by X2 minus X1 be very careful for this double negative right here. You've got y1 is negative one, but the formula says subtract. So we end up doing negative two plus one divided by negative one minus two is negative three. And that comes out to be negative one over negative three. So the, so the slope is one third. And recall I had you make the change. These two are negative and the one-thirds are positive, so that rules out A and B. And now we need to figure out which point matches. So the slope, the point-slope formula is Y minus Y1 is equal to slope, is equal to slope times X minus X1. And I've written the formula sort of funny like that so that we can plug everything in. Here's y1, negative one, so minus negative one, and the slope is one third, and then x minus x1 is minus two, so again, this double negative is gonna become y plus one equals one third times x minus two, and that makes d the only possible answer. So in this problem, I think the first and most obvious piece of information that you can put to use is that Emily types at a rate of 72 words per minute and that she finishes typing her essay in 55 minutes. So 72 words per minute times 55 minutes 
is equal to a total of 3,960 words. So you can immediately eliminate A and B. And then from here, you can really just do a sanity check. A sanity check. Anna's rate of typing, 62 words per minute, is slower than Emily's rate of typing at 72 words per minute. So since Anna types slower, it's gonna take her more than 55 minutes to finish the essay. So the answer is C. Now, if you wanna come across that mathematically, use this same format of rate times time equals number of words, but plug in the information for Anna. Anna types at 62 words per minute times some unknown number of minutes, but that will still be equal to the same number of words because that is given information in the problem. Both essays contain the same number of words. 3960 divided by 62 is about 63.8 and there's some other numbers there but that really does make a confirmation that C is the correct answer. So this problem here really just tests your ability to make connections between ordered pairs and equations. Negative 6 is an X. K is a Y. So rewrite this equation with 5 times negative 6 minus 2. Well, y is k, so why not? Let y be equal to k equals negative 24. 5 times negative 6 is negative 30 minus 2k equals negative 24. If you add 30 to both sides, you'll come up with negative 2k equal to positive 6. Divide both sides by negative 2, and you get k equals negative 3. And yes, of course, the lazy man's way would be to plug in negative 6 for x, and then go try 27, 3, negative 3, and negative 27 for y, and see when, which one gives you a correct answer. So the best way I could figure out to solve number 9 was through a proportion and it's the fact that there are these proportion problems on here that I didn't really go over in class that I let everybody miss one for free. 35 miles per hour can be written as 35 miles per hour, but hours written as 60 minutes. And if you do that division, 35 divided by 60, that gives you a rate of 0.58 three repeating. So that is basically a constant of variation there. That's a miles per minute. So if she goes 0.583 miles per minute, multiply that by 20 minutes and you get 11 and two thirds miles, which is less than 13 miles. So she is not going fast enough. The best answer there is C. All right, I think a lot of you guys got this one right uh, by way of trial and error. Uh, but it is an interesting application of standard form. Uh, so if jelly filled donuts cost 50 cents, so that's 0.5 times X or J jelly filled, and Glaze costs 30 cents, so that's 30 cents times Y or G glazed. And I've got a two dollars to spend. He wants to purchase at least one of each of these donuts. Which of the following does not represent a reasonable combination? So the value's got to be less than or equal to two. Uh, so this is arguably an inequality problem and therefore does not belong on this test, but what are you going to do? If you take all of the values and plug them in, you'll find that C is the only workable solution. 0. 0.5 times 3 plus 0. 0.3 times 2 is not less than or equal to 2. It is actually 1.5 plus 0.6, 
which equals 2.1, which as I said, is not less than or equal to two. So C is the one correct answer because that's the one that does not represent a reasonable combination. So be sure you're reading closely. So until 90% or so or more of you guys are getting this type of problem right on a regular basis, you can expect to keep seeing it. Um, the trick is to identify the relationship between the variables. In this case, cost depends on weight. So the change in the cost, which is one, is gonna be divided by the change in the weight, which is 10. And that's gonna work out at every ratio in this table. So three over 30, two over 20, one over 10, are all equivalent to the package costing 10 cents per ounce. Alrighty, if you didn't know what to do on this problem, I'm not sure what to tell you. Slope is the number that is multiplying x when we're in slope intercept form. It can be positive, it can be negative, it can be a fraction, it can be a decimal because we're in slope intercept and not standard form. And just the same, the y-intercept is negative six because it's a number sort of tacked on to the end out there, our initial value. So if you don't understand those and you aren't coming to tutorials, good luck to you. Alrighty, and these last two, uh, number 14, most people just sort of guess and check their way through. Here's an algebraic way to say it. Consecutive integers are n, n plus one, and n plus two. And if you're watching this video right now, you're gonna be very glad that I showed you this problem. Anyhow, so we want the sum of three consecutive integers. So that's n plus n plus one plus n plus two. And then we want to know that that value is equal to 36. So I've got one, two, three n's and one and two equals 36. Subtract three from both sides and you get that three n is equal to 33. Divide by three and you get that n is equal to 11. But we want the value of the second integer. So take that 11, substitute it right in here. 11 plus one is 12. And for number 15, the perimeter of this triangle is 104. And the perimeter is what you get when you add all of the sides together. And so you can drop those parentheses and combine like terms for 3x plus 14 equals 104. Subtract 14 from both sides and you get 3x equals 90. Divide both sides by three, you get x equals 30. But we want the value of the longest side. So take 30 and substitute it back in to get 30 plus, to get 30 plus seven, or a final answer of 37 is the value of the longest side.